Hello, everyone. It's Phil Jones from Projected Reviews, and joining me is Jason from Meridio. And today we're going to be talking about quick tips that you can do to optimize your display, whether it's a flat panel or projector, to get the best picture quality in your room. So, Jason, how are you? I'm great, Phil. Thank you so much for having me. But before we get started, we'd like to thank our sponsors, which are actually Meridio and AV Pro Edge for helping me put on the Fall Projection Summit, where we're talking about all the things you need to set up and install a great home theater system, whether it's centered around a projector or even, in this conversation, a display. So, so, so Jason, one, one way that I met you was, of course, through Meridio, because um, mm -hmm. I have a lot of your tools. I met you a few years ago at trade shows. You've sure. always been the guy that I would call if I ever had a problem and I needed um, um, a solution um, when it comes to troubleshooting and things like that. Sure. And even video distribution and long distance HDMIs, yeah. the list goes on and on and on. But another mm -hmm. thing that you are well versed in and I've learned a lot from you is, as well is calibration. Mm -hmm. And Meridio makes a huge amount of tools for calibration. But by the way, why do people calibrate anyway? What's the benefit of calibrating a display? Well, I mean, there's there's kind of two parts to it. Um, the the purist in me and my kind of I'll, I'll call it my artistic side, even though I'm not very artistic or creative. But um, you know, I I really enjoy looking at art in the proper light. So mm -hmm. you know, just like going into a museum, if I go into a museum and they have blue lights shining onto the painting, I'm not seeing that painting in the correct light. So you know, if you think about film as an art, which we all should be. And now, especially with some of these TV shows, the way they look these days, very cinematic. Uh, video games are just blowing our minds every day with how good they look. We we really enjoy seeing uh, that type of content in its purest and truest form. So, you know, if if we're looking at a movie like, we'll just say Avatar, for example, very specific colors in that movie that were chosen very intentionally for emotions and moods and, and things like that, I want to see that stuff, you know, as as it was intended. And that's mm -hmm. that's one part of calibration. The other part about it is the the practical, the 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 kind of the common sense stuff. I'll, I'll call it. But if I'm watching a movie and I can't see shadows, something's wrong. If I can't see Batman stepping out of his car because it's a big black blob of everything, or if I'm watching Game of Thrones and it's just a black screen where you can't see much, mm -hmm. um, you know that's that's very disappointing and it completely takes away from from the from the uh, from the experience. But you know, it's not just shadow details. You know, if we're looking at really bright detail, we don't want that to be lost. Uh, think of maybe watching hockey or maybe watching a planet Earth type thing where there's clouds in the sky or mountains. You know, we don't want the cloud to look like one big blob because we know there's detail in the cloud. We really concentrate a lot on skin tones. Um, if you turn on the news and somebody's bright red, then it looks kind of weird. If they're kind of greenish, they look kind of sick. So there's a lot of specific things that we're looking for to not only kind of enhance what you're seeing in the picture, but the the benefit of that also is that we're seeing the art now in its in its truest form. So you know, if I'm sitting next to a director who whoever maybe James Cameron made Avatar, and we're looking at that movie on a calibrated display, because guess what, that movie was color graded and edited on a calibrated display. So the whole idea of it is is that what they saw in the studios is what we're also seeing at home. So the people out there who might call themselves video files. That's exactly what we're going for when we talk about calibration. Now let's talk about this a little bit more too. Oh, sorry, go ahead. Let's talk about this a little bit more. Um, yeah, sure. Just one more point I'm going to get across. Go um, for it. This really matters. This actually has even a bigger impact on a projector because yes. when you have a flat panel, the goal of a flat panel is you calibrate a flat panel to make it as close to the what the the think of it as the reference panel. It's like a panel that's right, and there's mm -hmm. one panel that some engineer made, and it's just right. Yeah. And then they make uh, thousands of other copies of that display. Yes. Well, manufacturing variations in manufacturing and things like that, you're not. Um, the goal is to get it back to almost like reference. So yeah. the red is the red, and the blue is the blue, and there's nothing Correct. going on. Mm -hmm. But that flat panel is its own little world. It's it, yes. it is is it impacted by the environment a little bit, but not dramatically, you know. Mm -hmm. But when you look at a projector, a projector is part of a full system, sure. um, whether your screen is high gain, low gain, whether your um, your room is painted red or your room yeah. is painted blue or your room is black. 
the mm -hmm. all of that impacts the performance of your screen. So you can flip on a, you can flip on a lamp and it it washes it out the shadow everything. details. I mean the smallest things on a projection system. Yep, it changes everything. So there is a reason why you would calibrate. I get asked a lot, why don't you Phil share all of your measurements wow. after you calibrate your display? And I don't really like doing that. Now I will tell you that a projector is pushing red or pushing blue yeah. at the at the higher at the higher brightnesses, but I don't right. like to really give out a hundred percent of all of my little details. Yeah. You know why? Because my screen is not like your screen. My projector is not your projector. So those variances are there, right? And then my room may be gray and your room may be blue. And, and I tell you to take too. some gray, I tell you to take some green out. Yeah. And you may have needed that green because your room is blue. Yeah. So absolutely. you can do more harm using my little fine details to adjust. So things like what's the best color mode, what's the best picture mode out of the box, right? Maybe contrast settings, where you're gonna have to adjust the RGB uh, for for grayscale. That makes sense. But but things mm. like CMS and exact things, I don't really want to give you yeah. because yeah. I'm worried that I'm gonna you're going to think that we look at it, man, Phil messed, Phil doesn't know what he's doing because mine doesn't look right, you know? So, yeah. so that's something that I want to point out. Yeah. So anything you want to mention about Jason? Because I know you're kind of, that's something for you as well about yeah. our, other people's settings. Our goal, especially, you know, our goal and the integrator's goal really is to make sure the system's functioning properly and it's as accurate as possible and it looks as best as it possibly can. So when you're talking about some of the tools that we sort of mentioned before, Fox and Hound and the uh, 6A, 6G combo here, something that I, I usually do is, you know, I, I have an A in my kit as well, A for analyzer. So if I show up to do, if I'm hired just for a simple calibration, you know, I need to make sure the system's working correctly first. So if if I start running some tests and I notice something, you know, isn't quite right, I'll take out the analyzer and start plugging it into maybe the output of the AVR, maybe the output of the source and figure out like where the failure point point might be. So within a few moments, you know, we can find out what might not be happening. Maybe the HDR light's not popping up on the upper right corner of the screen when you feed it an HDR signal. So I can take out the analyzer, I can figure out what's going on, fix it. And then we can worry about calibrating the system. And Phil, one thing I did want to mention too, just because a lot of people forget about this, you know, there's there's many parts to it. So you have your projector or your flat panel with a bunch of settings in it. Then you have maybe an AVR that might have a bunch of settings in it. And then you might have a source that has a bunch of settings in it. So when we talk about calibration, it's not just the display, it's really the full system. So, you know, you could take any of your, um, you know, 4K Blu-ray players right now and go into a menu somewhere and you'll find things like contrast and brightness and sharpness and color and tint in the Blu-ray player. So, you know, again, we're not worrying about just the display. It's more about the uh, the full system. Okay. So, like I said, there's reasons why you calibrate. There's reasons why you shouldn't use somebody else's calibrations on your yeah. um, de fine information or fine details. Um, mm -hmm. It can give you a kind of a guide, but you shouldn't yeah. be using it verbatim. So, right. calibration is good. But what we're going to talk about now is there's things you can do, anybody, a normal person, to get the most out of your your display. This is actually before and after calibration, but you can fix a lot of the stuff that you see on the image to the left just mm -hmm. by picking the right mode. Totally. So if you don't know what's going on here, um, the ones in gray show the error. You don't want you want those to be either gone or or as pretty small much as possible. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, and then if you look at the middle section, you want the red, green, and blue to be about the same. Those represent yep. different shades of gray. You know, from uh, 10 is like dark, dark gray, mm -hmm. and 100 is basically white. It's and white, you want to yeah. make sure that everything is correct. And then mm -hmm. the one above is how well and accurate are you tracking the right. colors? Now, right. a calibrator has something like Calman. It's connected to the to the per, to the uh, to the analyze to the generator, and it's connected mm -hmm. to your PC. And it's connected to right. a camera um, or right. a meter, and it measures all this stuff, and you can really, really tweak it. Mm -hmm. But there's some things that you can do, like I said, as a normal human being to get more out of your displays. Sure. The first thing is picking the right picture mode. Mm -hmm. um, and it, like, for example, this is just, I think this is a high sense. And you can see even from here, there's a whole lot of different, um, each one of these picture modes look completely different. Totally. Um, and I love this picture because uh, it's kind of it's an ISF picture. Can you talk a little bit about 
why this picture is so cool and for using for this type of stuff? Yeah, so this image was made by Portrait Displays many years ago. What we were really excited about this when it came from Portrait Displays is that it had uh, multiple different skin tones. It has the primary and secondary colors in their clothing, so red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow. Um, there's easy things to see with shadow detail, like in some of the people's hair, the gentleman in the green shirt, he's got on a dark pair of jeans. You can see some shadow detail in there, or maybe you can't, so you know that things have to be adjusted there. And the background of that image is um, is a grayscale. So we know there's there's even other things too, Phil. It's not just about color. You can figure out, like if your sharpness is too high or too low, um, if your sharpness is too high, that is really not good. And it's kind of weird and deceiving. It seems backwards, but in most cases, the sharpness is set lower, not higher. And you know, a lot of people out there, they, oh, I want a sharper picture, so they crank it up, and it does some really nasty things. In this test pattern specifically, if you crank the sharpness up too high, you know, you start to see a lot of noise in their skin tones, and everybody starts to look like a cardboard cutout compared to the background. So we can tell the color saturation, we can tell the hue, we can tell the sharpness, we can tell the shadow detail, and we can tell the color temperature. So there's about five things just right there that you can get off this one image. Yeah, oh yeah, you can look at little things. At the background gray, if right. you look at his collar, um, right, right around his neck and around her neck, can yeah. I see the collar of the T-shirt? If not, right. your signal's clipped. Turn right. your contrast down. If you yep. look at his, uh, if you look at his pants, if you look at, if you ever seen somebody wear a pair of black jeans, they're never mm -hmm. black. They kind of are kind of blackish with gray specks. Yeah. <laughs> can you yeah. actually see that? Yeah. You know, yeah. so you can use this picture to pick the mode that makes the person, these people look like real human beings, sure, all right? Sure. You're not trying, if it looks, look look at your skin tone, look at the picture. If it yeah. doesn't match, mm -hmm. it's too much. So and I know that one of the big challenges that people who, are, who don't do this for a living and the first time that they see a calibrated display, they're used to seeing everything completely overdone. Yeah, totally blown and out, yeah. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a stereo guy, you take your, your EQ and you crank up the bass, you crank up the highs. <laughs> yeah, people, yeah. people really like that. And then they come in here and they want really crazy colors. But right. those real crazy colors are not realistic. If I could maybe mention one more thing too, we're talking so much about picture quality because that's you know the primary reason we do this. But also think about this too, Phil, and I'm sure you've seen this plenty of times in, in your days, but you know if, if somebody's watching too bright of a picture, especially mm -hmm. if the room's a little darker and they wonder why they're getting headaches, well, it's because your TV's too bright. So, you know, there's certain levels that we aim for so we're not blinding people in a, in a dark room. But at the same time, you know, we want the picture to be nice and bright and impactful in a bright room. So mm -hmm. most of the calibrators out there, myself included, will actually calibrate like a day and night mode, you know, for, mm -hmm. for, the, for the end user well, to be able to switch between the two. more important for a projector. Because totally. projectors are really impacted. So Absolutely. you may take this pattern and even before you touch brightness and color and right. all of the different settings, sure. go in. Mm -hmm. Pick the best picture mode for nighttime. Then, during if you're going to be using it during the day or when there's some ambient light, because sometimes I have my lights all the way off in my room. Yeah. But sometimes my wife wants the lights up slightly so she can, because she doesn't want it pitch black all the time. Sure. And turn it up to that, and then pick the one that looks best for that. And it's not right. the brightest. It's, it's not the, the brightest. One that makes these people look like actual human beings. Mm -hmm. Don't overdo it just because you can. Um, a lot of, and, and by the way, a lot of projectors out there that say they're 3,000 ANSI lumens mm -hmm. are 3,000 ANSI lumens in a very inaccurate, and cooked vivid. mode. Everybody yeah. looks like Martians. Um, yeah. I will tell you, that happens a lot. Like uh, laser projectors, there's tons of benefits to a laser projector. Very low maintenance, turns yeah. on, turns off really, really fast. But the way these laser projectors work, is it normally has a blue light in it, a blue diode, and mm -hmm. then that blue diode strikes a yellow phosphor wheel, and then that yellow phosphor wheel goes through filters to break it up into red, green, and blue. Right. It really makes a lot of green, and mm -hmm. what ends up happening is to get the real bright, the high brightness, you got to have a ton of green in it. Yes. But as you start cranking down on the green so people don't look like Martians, you're cranking down on the brightness. So yes. a lot of times these three, five, six thousand lumen projectors, when you get them so the colors are accurate, are probably only about two thousand. Or yeah. if you're lucky, I will say that's one of the benefits of you looking at buying a a higher end premium model. 
like mm -hmm. like for home theater, like a Sony or a JVC or really good BenQ or really good Epson, the name of two. Sure. The, those projectors, they may not have as crazy of a brightness, claimed brightness, but mm -hmm. because the brightness is actually measured at at colors in a color range that is actually accurate. So right. if it says it's 3000, probably when it's completely tweaked to this high heaven to be the best looking picture you've ever seen, you'll probably mm -hmm. still get 28 or 2600 out of it. Yeah. Um, the, so and even at 3000, you would look at it in its brightest mode right. and it would still not make everybody look like a cartoon. So that is, that is important. The, uh, for any of the audio folks listening in and Phil, I know you and I, you know, we talk a lot about audio ourselves, especially two channel, but, um, it very much reminds me of amplifier power. You know, um, I spent a few years in car audio in my younger days and, you know, we would get these thousand watt amplifiers and everybody would be drooling all over them. Meanwhile, you read the specs and, you know, it's a thousand watts at 14.4 volts at a specific frequency. So it's like, wait a second, is this really a thousand watts? And, and, you know, there, there aren't many manufacturers of amplifiers out there that, um, I'll say, tell you the truth. And we see that a lot with projectors uh, to the point you just brought up. And we see it a lot with screens too. I mean, there's a lot of uh, acoustically transparent screens out there that say, you know, we only block X amount of light. And in fact, they block a lot more than that. And, you know, that's based on the rest of the system. So, you know, just, you know, don't, if you're shopping for these types of things, guys, don't, don't like rely just on the, on the specs that you're reading on the side of the box. Mm -hmm. uh, look up maybe some of the stuff that I've done maybe on YouTube and talked about certain displays. Uh, Vincent over at HDTV test, he's very good at this. So when you're looking at these, um, uh, I'll call them more professional uh, type of people, um, they're going to tell you the truth. I mean, we've got light meters, we've got test patterns, we've got generators, we know what's actually really going on. So just be careful when you're shopping out there that you're not just going off the manufacturer specs. And that's what we try to do too. We always yes. look at like, we always say, Absolutely. okay, out of the box, these are kind of the best picture modes. Right. You know, in a darkened room, maybe movie or cinema, in yeah. a bright room, maybe standard or TV, because it's the best balance between high brightness and an accurate color. So we'll try to tell you that. And what we try to do is you try to measure each picture mode. So yes, you know, yes. okay, mega vivid, they said it's 3000. Okay, it's 3000. <laughs> mega vivid. <laughs> the most accurate picture mode may be cinema, and you'll see that that cinema mode may be 1400. So we right. try to include that stuff too for projectors because you need to do it. Now, these test patterns, Mm -hmm. uh, are built into the fancy test pattern generators. They but are. Meridio is being a good citizen. So there's mm -hmm. two places where you can actually get these. They are actually on their website. So mm -hmm. if you go to meridio.com and yes. you go to resources, you can actually see some of the test patterns we're gonna be talking about. Mm -hmm. And if you're mega lazy, you can even go to their YouTube channel. So this mm -hmm. is the Meridio YouTube channel. Just yes. search, out, search up Meridio. And not only will you have Jason talking about calibration and measurements and how to use their tools and what do all of those different terminologies mean, sure. but he also took the time, they also took the time to put many of the test patterns that we are talking about into their YouTube channel. The test patterns that you mentioned on the Meridio page, those are downloadable completely for free. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, when you're talking about picking the best mode out of the box, you know, that's, that's awesome. And, and that's what we should be doing, um, on the YouTube channel, um, there's really three major test patterns that I have people look at if they're not planning on, or maybe they're not ready yet for the calibration. Well, let's talk about some of these patterns. Now sure. there's some classic patterns that everybody needs to understand. The first one is this pattern here. Oh, what yeah. is this pattern used for and how would someone who, who, um, use this to adjust their projector? So there's a couple things we're looking at here. Um, there's a lot of, um, people are very intimidated with picture settings. You know, they don't really know what they're doing. They don't really know what they're looking at and they just sort of give up or they just don't even attempt it. And I'm trying to, to get the point across that it doesn't have to be like that. This stuff is, people tend to overthink this stuff and they're, they're intimidated by it and you don't have to be. We'll look at this example. Uh, this is a perfect example of this. So when we're looking at this test pattern, uh, you'll notice across the bottom, there's a series of boxes and above the boxes, there's a number followed by the letter D. The D just means digital. So we're looking at like in the dead center, we're looking at digital level 235. So the whole point of this test pattern is at the end of the day, you wanna see as many boxes as you can. So depending on your contrast setting on your flat panel or your projector, if you're missing like those top two rows of boxes, then your contrast is too high. We call that clipping. 
So you go into your menu of your projector or your flat panel, you turn the contrast down three, four, five clicks, all of a sudden you can see the boxes and your contrast is set. The other thing we worry about too with contrast, there's only two ways to screw up the contrast. Number one, it's clipped. It's set too high. Maybe it's even set too low and stuff starts to look dim and washed out and gross. The other thing that we're looking at too is something that we call a color shift. This was a lot more prominent with things like CRTs and plasmas, but we 1 million percent still see it today, just not as often. So what happens if the contrast is being pushed too high, not only might it clip, but some of those boxes might look a little pinkish or maybe a little bluish or maybe a little greenish. So those two things right there tell you that your contrast is too high. And again, you go to the menu, you turn the contrast down three, four clicks, all of a sudden you can see more boxes and all of a sudden yeah. now they're actually white. So you know your contrast is in a good, in, in a good position. Yeah. And then there's a fine balance between um, oh, the, yeah. the getting the, seeing all the boxes and that brightness, like that overall yeah. full screen brightness that, right. that that Jason was talking about. Think of this as there's 256 steps up from from black to super bright white in a right. in a video signal. Um, yes. Most video signals do not use it all. They right. normally go up to about 235. Yes. So everything above 235 is just gravy. Okay, yeah, it's free contrast. So it's this extra free contrast. So yeah. what you want to do is you want to make sure you at least see at um, least. beyond 235. At, I always try to say at least try to get to about 245. Okay? Yeah, that's a good that's and, a good um, way to look at it. And, sure. and that's a good one because now you're because as I turn down the contrast, I'm going to turn down the brightness. I'm going to turn down. Remember you said it was 3,000 lumens. Yeah. If I right. start turning down the contrast, um, I start reducing how many lumens I get. Now it the thing that quick. trips people out is the, the the names of these settings people are oh not boy. what they're supposed to be. Contrast um, affects your overall brightness. Remember I turned down the contrast, the brightness will start to go down. Brightness affects how bright your blacks are. <laughs> it, mm -hmm. it makes no sense. So brightness right. affects the bottom, yes. you know, what you can see, and contrast affects the top. Right. So if you're trying to make something brighter, if I crank up the brightness, I'm not going to make the signal any brighter. Right. I'm just making my Jason's gray um, black shirt look like my shirt is what right, it end yeah. up happening. If sure. I so basically, con brightness cranked up too high, it looks like my gray shirt. Contrast cranked down too low, you can't make out Jason's collar. Yeah. So so that's that's what that is for. So this first test pattern that you would use simply go in first thing you do, like we talked about, you use the people to try to find the best looking picture mode in your dark room. Can I see the collar or the skin tones correct? Um, does it look like a human being or a cartoon, right? Yeah. Then once you do that, then you we go into this contrast one and you adjust your contrast mm -hmm. until you can see at least 245. Many projections yeah. go 255, no problem. It all depends on the unit that you have. You make and sure that, the, that, that all the squares are gray. Like, yes. As Jason said, sometimes those, those those squares go greenish and pinkish, mm -hmm. and all, that tells you there's a contrast problem. Turn them down until all the, until you have lots of little gray boxes. Yes. All right? If if I could um, just say one thing, Phil. Um, if you guys are out there and you're using this test pattern, I just want to point out one thing. When we talk about the video, the RGB, like what you'd use for a, a computer monitor being zero to two fifty five, the way this test pattern is made is two fifty five is the background. 256 isn't actually a level, it's a timing signal. So mm -hmm. on this test pattern specifically, don't, you know, don't keep fighting yourself to try to see 255. 255 is the background. So the oh. brightest box that you might see here is actually 254. But as Phil said, if you're over 235, that's good. If you can see up to 245, that's awesome. If you can see up to 254, 254, then that's, you know, again, that's just headroom and free contrast. But the the balance is is uh, you know if, if the screen's really big or the room's got some light in it and you turn the contrast down so you can see all the boxes, maybe the picture's not as bright as it used to be, crank the contrast back up, at least see 235 and you're still in that legal range for video. Mm -hmm. And I will say one of the hardest things about looking at this is people used to looking at things that are really cool. Uh, yeah, a, lot of, a lot of times the human eye, if you add blue, it appears to be brighter. So a yep. lot of times when you start picking these more accurate picture modes for skin tones, it may seem a little pinkish to you yep. or not as bright, but yep. that's because, but that's actually a, a, a better, closer to gray it, mm -hmm. um, than what you would normally see. Now the next one, we're talking about, this is how you adjust contrast. Right. 
The one that's trippy is this one is how you um, address uh, um, adjust brightness. Remember talking yes. about you would say what? Yeah. You know, so brightness is basically where black begins. Right. <laughs> so that's the best yeah. way I can kind of explain it, right? Good, so yeah, well, good how way. would you use this pattern? So this one is basically the opposite, right? There's a, a, a series of boxes across the top. There's three rectangles in the middle, another series of boxes, uh, uh, I'm sorry, across the bottom, then the middle, then the top. So uh, Phil mentioned before that in the zero to 255 um, RGB range, or maybe what a computer monitor uses, the video signal is a little more squished than that, just for storage and transport and things like that. So um, you heard us say a few times before 235 when you're talking about the white level. So the, the video range, when you're talking about video signals, the um, what is zero in PC language is 16 in video language. So with video, we're looking at a, a range of 16 up to 235. Of course, this is 8-bit, and those number changes with 10 and 12-bit. But um, the point of this test pattern is, if you look across the bottom, you've got uh, digital level 6 to digital level 15. You should not see any of those boxes. Those are what we call below black. If you can see those boxes, that means the black level is raised and everything that's supposed to be dark looks washed out. You will also notice that the background of this particular test pattern, uh, I'm not sure what display you guys might be looking at it on, but we don't want that background to be gray. We want it to be as black as possible, but here's the trade-off. When we're looking at the middle of this test pattern, as I said, if we're looking at uh, 16 to 235, 16 on this test pattern is black for video signals. So you should not see the bottom, 6 to 15. You should not see the 15 that's in the middle of those three rectangles. You should not see 16 because 16 is black and that's the background. Where you should start to see details is in level 17. So you can use it in the middle rectangle, what Phil's circling right now with his mouse, or you can look across the top. So there's a few different ways to do this. I'll give you a couple of tips. Um, and you can do this either way. You're going to come up with the same uh, number at the end of the day anyway. First, you can try it this way. Take your brightness control or your black level control and turn it excessively down on purpose. And then you can come up one click at a time until all of a sudden you can see 17. Once that's done, you've got the black level set correctly. The other way of doing it, this is what I tend to use for, for my clients because you know, sometimes we're in a bright living room or something, it's a little easier to do it this way, but I'll turn up the black level slash brightness until 17 is very easy to see, mm -hmm. and the bottom row is very easy to see, and then we'll start going one click down at a time mm -hmm. until 17 disappears, and then we come back up a click. So whether you start low and go high or start high and go low, you're gonna come up with the same value anyway, but the, the important thing here is we real this is, Phil, I know you'll agree with me. This is the most important part of the image right here. This is yeah. really what helps us with more contrast and more dynamic range. So if the black level is too low, you might get more contrast, but you can't see any shadows. So it's this fine balance in between keeping the black levels black, but also being able to see shadows. And there might be times because of screen size or room lighting or whatnot, where you just cannot see that 17. So you have to think about like, what judgment call do I make here? What do I do if I can't see 17? Well, if you crank up the black level and all of a sudden you can see 17, but the background is gray, everything's gonna look washed out. So I always tell people, error on the side of too dark. If I have to sacrifice box 17 to not wash the picture out, I'll do it, right? Not and remember too, 17 is like the first shadow in a movie. So yes. if you're missing that, but the picture's not washed out, it's not the end of the world. But best case scenario, the background is black, 16 is black, you can't see the bottom row, and you can barely see 17. Okay, and that's a good point. Now, the one thing that I like about this is if you look at the bottom, the other thing that Jason did and his team did was, um, you may not remember all the stuff we just talked about. We're talking, yeah, go sorry. down here and turn this up and look at 16 and look at 17. <laughs> if you look at it, they actually wrote the instructions. Yeah, I wrote it out, yeah. They explain to you exactly how to utilize these test patterns right. in the proper way. So it says, this is what you should look at. This is good. Mm -hmm. This is bad. So you yeah. don't have to remember exactly what we said when you download these test patterns. And in fact, I will put a link in the bottom of the YouTube channel, um, there you go. Uh, YouTube description, so you can directly to this this section where you can get these test patterns. You can remember what you can use those. Um, to So you don't have to remember everything we said. The other good thing point. that's kind of important about this too 
is for a display. The display, a flat panel display is all by itself, remember? On a mm -hmm. projector, it's different. A, and I have done this. All you're doing with a projector is a projector has a limited amount of contrast. And depending on the gain of your screen, all you're doing is moving that up and down. Right. <laughs> okay. Right. And there's no, no screen is going to give you more contrast. What they're going to do is put the contrast where it's best for your eye. Mm -hmm. So, for example, a ambient light rejecting or a gray screen is going to take that and pull it down. So mm -hmm. now it's you, the blacks appear blacker in a brighter room, but guess what? Your brightness went down. Right. The high gain screen is going to do this and make your colors more vibrant. And because you're in a bright room, you're not as sensitive to blacks. So sure. even though the blacks are now gray, the it, it still appears to be slightly it still appears to be black to you. So right. all the screen does it move it back up and down and yep. back and forth. Yeah. So you may I've done it. Well, I set it for my matte white screen. And it's it's like this, and then mm -hmm. I switch to my ambient light rejecting screen, and it's too black. Yeah. So now, sure. so that's the reason why I don't give you all my measurements it's, because if I tell you to set useless. this, um, to set this brightness to minus one, and I have a matte white screen, right. and you have an ambient light rejecting screen, you may be crushing more than what you need to. Totally. So so that's one of the reasons we go. Why don't you give me all your settings? That is why I would rather yeah. explain to you how to get the best contrast. And the best bright and the best contrast and black level in your room right. to give you my measurements. Okay, so Good that's point. something that I really want to get across. Now there are some other patterns in here, right? Um, that we could talk about. You have things for um, they say it's 4K, and this pattern can be utilized right here to adjust sharpness and check yes. edge to edge and 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 um and determine a lot of projectors and TVs have um detail enhancements mode yeah, yeah. And most of the time at a distance it makes things seem sharper but sure. a lot of time those detail enhancement ones actually reduce resolution and yes. you will see it really quickly with this test pattern it's so fine there's little fine lines in here mm -hmm. and to the point where there's no way you're going to be able to see it on your screen right now no way and yeah. you can use this to adjust it and a lot of times you'll get more detail by turning the sharpness down Yes. Not up. So yes. is that right, Jason? Is that the best way to explain that? Yeah, that's 100% right. Um, again, I think I mentioned this before. You know, somebody um, hasn't watched a video like this or, you know, just, uh, uh, you know, they're just going through the menu and you see something called sharpness and you go, sweet, I want a sharper picture and you crank it up. And it's, uh, again, it's, it's the opposite of that. So when you're looking at this test pattern, there's really two things that we're looking for here. Uh, number one, you'll notice in the test pattern, um, there, it makes a big diamond shape around that center circle. So in the test pattern that you download, that does have the tips of the diamond in the test pattern. And what we see a lot of times is we put up a flat panel or projector and the tips of those diamonds are chopped off a little bit. That means you're not getting full resolution. So you gotta figure out why. And nine times out of 10, there's something in the aspect ratio menu and something we call overscan is turned on. So when the manufacturers have the overscan turned on from the factory, they zoom in on the picture about two or 5%. It's not much, but it's to eliminate any wacky, weird lines that you might see across the top, bottom, left to right of the screen when you're watching broadcast. So they do it on purpose. And one of the things you should do is turn that off immediately. So once you have the overscan turned off, you can see the tips of the diamonds, you're in really good shape. Now we can start to look at some of the fine details. I like to call them ruler marks. Mm -hmm. So if you look across that middle band, You'll see, it's again, you're not gonna be able to see it here, but when you look at the test pattern, there's small little numbers, and in between the numbers, there's little ruler marks or hash marks. What you wanna look for here is when you turn the sharpness, and again, this is like black level, you can start low and come high, or, or start high and come low. If the sharpness is too high, you'll see those little black hash marks, they'll have this white halo around them, and that's distortion. So when you see that white halo around those ruler marks, you need to lower the sharpness. Now what you want to avoid is lowering the sharpness too much and now the picture looks or this test pattern might look like it's out of focus. Mm -hmm. Now in my experience over the last 14 years of calibrating, what I can tell you is that it's easy to turn the sharpness down too low and lose a lot of detail and make it look fuzzy and that's really, really not good if you're sitting close to the screen. Now test patterns are test patterns are test patterns. What about real world scenarios? 
if you think about the sharpness being too high, where I mentioned there's halos around um, around the hash marks, now if you translate that to real world content, an example I always like to use is that episode of uh, either Blue Planet or Planet Earth, but you guys have probably seen, I know Phil, you've seen it a million times, but there's an iguana running like on a rocky beach and all these snakes are trying to get them. At the end of it, there's lots of close-ups of the snakes and the rocks and the iguana's face. And when the sharpness is too high, all those scales and all the rocks and stuff, they just look really distorted and really gross. And all of a sudden you turn the sharpness down, all that extra edge enhancement's out of there and everything has nice soft edges like it does in real life. So the one thing to be careful with here is we certainly don't wanna turn the sharpness up and we don't wanna turn it down too low. What you will see on a lot of flat panels especially, you actually do end up at zero with the sharpness mm -hmm. control. Not always true, but it is common. Mm -hmm. So again, it's a balance between too sharp and not sharp enough. The other thing that I wanna point out here on this test pattern too, and Phil, if you wanna maybe circle this with your, with your mouse, but you see these X's on the screen. One of them says four by three, another one says 240, another one says 235 to one. Those are designed to show you where the black bars are going to be if you're watching, let's say, um, uh, four by three content on a 16 by nine screen. So there's a few different things you can use here for lining up a projector, making sure that you're seeing the tips of the diamonds, making sure the sharpness is set correctly. And this is also another one, a good, uh, good one to look at for Keystone. Now we all know, Phil, uh, you'll agree with me here too, we should not be using Keystone, right? The projector should go in the right spot, distance wise, height from the ceiling, height from the center of the screen or, or the, uh, the, the center of the top part of the screen at least. But that's not always possible. And sometimes you do have to use Keystone. It's not ideal by any means, but you'll notice on this test pattern, if you use the Keystone, you'll see some of these either horizontal or vertical lines, they just completely fall apart and they look jagged. You really see it in the dead center of the test pattern where there's that circle. There's some very fine lines inside that circle. And when you kick on the Keystone or if the sharpness is too high, you'll start to see this kind of moray effect. Moray. Yeah, yeah, inside of that, and it is just really, really gross. Yeah, it looks like a rain. Look at this funky rainbowy it's kind of star pattern. Weird. Thing. Yeah. So this, so there's some cool tools. There's a couple more things I want to point out. Yeah, so there's sure. tons of patterns on here. The mm -hmm. list goes on and on and on. Um, the one that I actually use a lot too is this little guy. Um, it's excellent. Pretty simple. You're trying to determine right. what's the best. We talk about you can use the kids, the the right. the, the, the the people. This mm -hmm. one also helps you with grayscale. You want right black to be black and all the different shades of gray all the way up to because all white is is a super bright shade of gray all it is. <laughs> and all black is is a super dark shade of gray you all want this to be even colored all the way through and you right. will see sometimes as you go through it goes from being gray and all of a sudden uh, as it gets brighter it goes to greens or blues yeah. or whatever and sure. that is if i look at this picture right here you would see this that all of a sudden it starts mm -hmm. off gray and then as it goes it gets bluer 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 bluer, 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 bluer. <laughs> yeah. okay and if you look at it you go why is it shifting you can literally see that so mm -hmm. when i take it from this and i look at the test pattern then i get it right it looks at that test pattern this should be gray 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 not a scary yeah. thing about this is i am telling you this thing is gray 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 but i don't know what your display looks like you may be looking at this and it may be green 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 and you can be like yeah. phil what are you talking about right but, sure. um but this needs to be, this is a, um, one of my favorite patterns. It's, it's really simple. So, mm -hmm. so like I said, there's tons of other patterns here, but if you just stuck with this gray pattern, um, this pattern here for sharpness and adjustment, um, this panel, this, this pattern here for um, picking the right picture mode, and then you adjust your contrast and you adjust your brightness, you will be amazed I'm, at I'm, how I'm, far you can get towards making your projector look better. Those five things that Phil just mentioned, guys, that gets you like 85, 90% of the way there. From there, somebody like me or, or Phil or another calibrator comes out there with light meters and they start really getting into it. Um, you know, a lot of that stuff is finesse, you know, and, and things like that. So, you know, there's just a million different things you can do. And Phil, I do want to point out maybe one more thing on that grayscale pattern, if you could maybe pull it up one, one more time. Looking at the neutrality of the gray, um, that's one thing to look for. But as we talked about brightness and contrast a little bit before, you can notice in this test pattern if the black level is too low or if the white level is too high. So when we're looking at the test pattern for brightness for black level, you know we were looking for 16 to be black and everything below it to be black and then 17 and everything above that to be visible. Well, if your blacks are crushed, guess what happens to those two first 
black and dark gray bars. They blend yeah, together, yeah. right? Yeah. And the so contrast... if you're watching this video and you don't see multiple steps that says telling yeah. you that your computer monitor, which I know a lot of you guys, your computer monitors are straight oh, yeah. out of the box, pivot mode. Of and, course. Um, that tells you that maybe if the bottom, you can't see the steps, turn up your brightness. Yes. On the other side, if you can't see the steps at the bright side over here, turn down your contrast. Perfect. Pretty straightforward. If you get it wrong, um, you'll know it. I remember um, the oh, last yeah. game of the Game of Thrones when the zombies came. It was the biggest um, show on the planet at that time, mm -hmm. and everybody watched it. And everybody was gonna. There was no way I was gonna miss that episode. But yeah. I was stuck in a hotel in Florida at Oof. a Best Buy event. Yeah. And so I went upstairs. I got my glass. I got my beer. I kicked back on my couch in my room, and I fired up the TV. And the TV was horrible. Yep. And, and that that scene, I wish I'm actually gonna. I wish I, I should put in, in in the final part of the video what um uh, uh episode that is because if yep. you can get that episode to look right, yeah. you got your contrast and your black levels correct. Because if you don't, half of the move the show you're yeah. not gonna see. And there yeah. was nothing I could do with that TV and the, I couldn't get into the settings on that TV. It was in hotel the, mode, probably. And, hotel, and it was just yeah. ah, it was the worst yeah. thing ever. So, I'll, I'll tell you guys too, like I personally know a, a gentleman from HBO who worked on that. And the last time I saw him, I was like, are you still hearing stuff about this Game of Thrones episode? And he's like, yes, multiple <laughs> times I'm, I'm still hearing stuff. And, you know, talking to him, you know, and, and of course watching it on a calibrated display, I didn't really have a hard time seeing anything because, you know, our black levels are set correctly. The the big thing with that was, you know, a bazillion of us were all streaming it at the same time. So we were getting a lot of compression artifacts and a lot of noise, especially in those darker parts. So what I'm really excited about is um, eventually one of these days I want to pick up like the whole box set of that show and rewatch that episode on disc. And I'm sure it's going to be just like a, Jason, Jason, more than a night and day, you know, no pun intended, night and day. Because I'm, I, and day I have difference. a flight escape. And, oh yeah, there you go. And I and I use it for all of my projector. Um, I use it basically. I have a script on my Kaleidoscape, and I run yeah. the same scenes. Why do I run the same scenes over and over and over again? Because I know them. what it's going to look like. Same yeah. thing with you. I, um, uh, if you're going to set up something, use these little test patterns. I use yeah. a minute black international scene where yeah. they're all sitting there in their black suits inside of their London office, and mm -hmm. it's a perfect test on whether or not. You have your contrast and your and your brightness totally. settings because it should the suit should be black, but you mm -hmm. should be able to see all of the detail in the black suit. So I yes. know that, and that's part of my scenes. And that Game of Thrones episode, I am gonna go buy so I can offer this it out. Off yeah. The call and yeah. stick it yeah. on this because like, they actually have that in their catalog, so I can actually use that as one of my new. It'll be the White Walker test, I guess, is what yes. we're gonna have to yeah. call it. Call it that. So, and, if I if maybe I could just mention one more thing because I know there's going to be some folks out there who are having a hard time seeing shadows and they're going to go crazy messing with this brightness control. I do want to point something out. Um, mm -hmm. the The quality of the uh, cameras and the quality of the color grading and who color graded it. You know, there might be some times, and I notice this a lot, where I'm watching a dark maybe horror movie or something, and of course my display at home's calibrated, and I'm looking at it, I'm going, man, where are the shadows at? And just to see what might be going on. I'll take my brightness control on my TV and I'll crank it up a little bit. The blacks will turn grayer, but no details pulled out. Mm -hmm. So what's happening is that stuff's being crushed at the source. At the <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, now there's that going on and also going on too, the, the black level might be crushed coming out of say your Blu-ray player. So mm -hmm. I, I mentioned this at the very beginning, we talk about a system calibration. So a good way to do this is take that black level test pattern, maybe on a thumb drive or whatever, put it directly into the TV, set your black level at the TV. Take the same thumb drive, pop it into your Blu-ray player, look at the same test pattern, and see if you can still see box number 17. If you can't, look in the Blu-ray player settings. The Blu-ray player might have a brightness slash black level control. You turn it up a click, now you can see 17. Now your Blu-ray player and your TV are agreeing with each other. So there's a, there's a couple steps to it, but if you get them all right, you should see shadow detail, no problem. I don't usually have this problem um, on really high quality content.
Maybe something's old, it's been remastered, whatever, whatever, whatever. But I just want to point that out, guys. If, if you're raising your black levels and not seeing more shadows, the, the projector's not broken, the TV's not broken, you're not doing anything wrong. The content's just a little crushed at the source. That's all. Okay. And there's one more tip that I'm going to give you. Oh, yeah. Um, most people don't notice that much crushed shadow detail down low. Yeah, but you do notice really quickly, quickly if the clouds in the sky are blown out. Yeah, if it's just know? a blob. Or you can't yeah. see outside the window. So <laughs> many times I tell people, um, it most projectors we want them to be deep black, but they're not an OLED, and even a, even a very good projector can't match don't, most LCDs. Don't even try. Yeah. Okay. So so blacks are great, but most projectors are just going to give you a darker gray. Right. So you're never going to get it black. Right. Right. So. Um, so get it as dark as you can with shadow details, but the one you're going to notice most is if the contrast is cranked up too high mm -hmm. and you're losing highlight detail. Right. You can't see it, the things outside the window and everything else. Mm -hmm. Now, um, this also applies to HDR. Um, if you're looking at a piece of HDR content and you can't see all of the detail in something, if I turn down the contrast, I will bring those highlights back. Mm -hmm. But but you're going to lower the entire on-screen brightness and yep. that a lot of times um, makes it less flavor favorable That'll so on wreck the sdr your HDR. you should be able to see all the highlight detail that's in it right in hdr it's just a it's what you like sometimes we have to, you have to you have to make you a judgment call. Make a compromise all right yeah phil there was there was one thing that just popped in my mind that we haven't touched on and it's important especially for flat panels Guys, when you're picking those modes, before you do anything, I would, say, I would even say to do this first, find the energy savings features and kill them with fire. That really, really darkens the picture and you might not be able to pull your shadow details out. So number one, turn off your energy saving stuff. And then on a projector, don't forget too, uh, you have a lamp setting. So if it's a traditional lamp, you might have high, medium, low. If it's a laser based, uh, a laser phosphor based projector, you might have a laser light setting. So, you know, those are also things that can make the picture brighter or darker. But mm -hmm. let's let's just go through one more time. Turn off energy savings, mm -hmm. pick a better picture mode, set your white level, black level sharpness, and then use mm -hmm. the family to do skin tones. And uh, you go. that's that's pretty much you go. again your 80, 85 percent of the way there. So before I let you guys go, I just want to remind everybody that those Test patterns are available on meridio.com under the mm -hmm. resources. And each of the test patterns, Jason and his team were nice enough to put in the instructions on how to utilize them. If right. you don't have the time or you or you just don't have the capability of, you know, because sometimes you got to take them, download them, put them on a USB, stick the USB into your Blu-ray player. And right. many of you are using Roku's and Apple TVs. Yeah, sure. Still place to plug that in, right? So... <laughs> That is where the um, the stuff on YouTube comes in because mm -hmm. I can go to my Apple TV, my Fire TV, my my Chrome Cat, my Chrome Stick, or whatever, yeah. and I can actually go to their YouTube channel, and those test patterns are here as well. And many of you, because you're using your Roku's, Apple TVs, Fire Sticks as your main source, this is actually important because when I go from YouTube back to Netflix on my Apple TV, I know I'm good on my Apple TV. Yeah. All right. So, so that's the thing. So it's really cool that they put these test patterns up here for you. So make sure if you don't, um, if you haven't subscribed, you like and subscribe to Meridio.com. And you better have already liked and subscribed to <laughs> my website, uh, my YouTube channel, which is Projected Reviews as yeah. well. So, so Jason. Yes. Thank you for You're coming very welcome. And, and going through these quick tips. And hopefully, hopefully. those out there have learned something on mm -hmm. ways that you can optimize your display, whether it's a flat panel or a projector.